Welcome back investors, Jake here. In this video, let's briefly talk about the events of this last week and then get into what new position I'll be taking in my Schwab account. The news story that's been dominating the markets this last week is the emergence of a new COVID variant called Omicron. Kind of an ominous sounding name, but it's just a Greek alphabet letter. And Jim Cramer said it best in that panic is not an investment strategy at all. For those of you leaving me comments like, Jake, should I sell this? Should I sell this? Are we selling? The answer is no. You, you should be able to recognize that when a new story like this happens, short sellers or short-term traders are just going to try and use it to their advantage. This is very spooky sounding, but just think about realistically what's going to happen. We, we already got our first confirmation of this variant appearing in the United States because, of course, and I think we're going to get our first confirmation of a fully vaccinated person getting sick again. And we might also, a couple weeks later, get confirmation of the first person who's been fully vaccinated who got Omicron and potentially passed away. Very sad story, but at the end of the day, the economy is still roaring. Unemployment is, is falling, revenue and earnings are up, all the large cap stocks are doing fantastic. The economy is great. Everyone's hiring. Like, I don't see how this stops or slows anything down, guys. Uh, interest rates will still stay low. The Fed is still buying bonds for the next couple months. If anything, the emergence of a new variant will just delay the Fed raising interest rates, will delay the tapering process for bond purchases, which will just keep the easy money flowing even longer. So, Short term, yeah, there's going to be a sell-off this week, maybe next week, but long term, I, 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 this doesn't change anything I'm doing in my Schwab account. The COVID variant has been dominating the financial news headlines, but behind the scenes for the last couple months, something else has been happening. And what's been happening is investors are pricing in slower growth for high growth companies in the year 2022. And you can see it so obviously when looking at companies like Zoom, uh, down 44% year to date, Peloton, down 70% year to date, PayPal, down 22%, Pinterest, down 45%, Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation Fund, down 19%. Any stock or any fund that's down double digits when the S&P 500 index fund year to date is up over 23%. What do all of these companies, what do all of these stocks have in common? And one, they might not have any positive earnings at all, but if they do, it's a very high multiple. Zoom, even, even after falling 44%, its price to earnings ratio is 52. Peloton uh, doesn't even have a price to earnings ratio because it can't make a profit. So even if you go on price to sales, you know, they do have sales at least. All of these companies were vastly overvalued, and these companies additionally took advantage of their inflated stock price, and they massively diluted their shareholders. They were issuing new stock. So companies that don't have great multiples and were issuing new stock, those are the companies that have cratered in the last three months of this year. And the queen of picking stocks that dilute their shareholders and have ridiculous Price to sales and price to earning multipliers is Kathy Wood's ARK ETF. And a year ago, people wouldn't shut up about it, how all I had to do was buy this ETF and I was set for life. Uh, between January and February, it was up 23%. But year to date, it's down 19% when SPY is up 23%. So Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation ETF has underperformed the market by almost 45%. So with that said, does this worry me? And no, it's because I don't invest in these companies. I don't invest in these stocks. I knew companies like Zoom and Peloton. Eventually the hype would wear off and they would come down to reasonable valuations. Same thing with all these crazy SPACs and all these crazy IPOs. If you're in a stock that is up huge and you love it and for some reason you think it's gonna keep going up, just look, at, just look at the price to sales. Look at the price to earnings ratio. Are they issuing new, new shares? Are they diluting you? If they are, this is a cautionary tale of what could happen to you if you buy and hold another 3, 6, 9, 12 months. Eventually, 
all of these stocks come down. So let's talk about a company that I don't see much downside risk because it has good earnings, good ratios, uh, good valuations. And today, uh, I'm taking a new position in General Dynamics Corporation. This is a defense contractor. It's the third largest defense contractor in America, behind probably Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman. Uh, the General Dynamics, I think, is most famous for uh, developing the F-16, but they, they have contracts for aerospace, marine systems, combat systems, and other various technologies that they sell to governments. And when we look at their year-to-date performance, they're actually outperforming the S&P 500 up 34% year-to-date. But when you zoom in to just the last six months, General Dynamics is only up 2%. And this is what has me interested or excited in this stock because when you look at the last six months, uh, this stock has been consolidating sideways in a range. Let's zoom out uh, and make it, maybe, maybe make it a little bit more easier to look at here. So here is the one-year uh, performance of General Dynamics, and stocks like this, it was trading in the 150 range. At some point, when the 200-day moving average caught up, it started breaking out, and it shot up from 150 to about 195, so it almost hit 200. It's now just been kind of trading sideways between 190 and 210 since April, and sure enough, this week, the 200-day moving average has caught up. Now, just because the technicals are good, it doesn't mean this company isn't overvalued. So let's go on macrotrends.net and just check out, you know, are they increasing their revenue? Are they profitable quarter over quarter? What are they doing with their shares outstanding? So let's start with revenue, and you can see that it was pretty flat between 2009 and 2018, but starting in the uh, first quarter of, uh, let's see here, 2018, you can see that their, their, their revenue increased. That's because uh, probably because President Trump took office and they increased the defense budget. If you think the defense budget's ever going to go down, I just, I just don't see that happening, guys, in the near term. Maybe someday, but their revenue is increasing, and they do uh, they do weapons technology and development for other companies like the UK as well. Let's look at net income. Is this a well managed company? Can they uh, can they remain profitable? And in their history, wow, they only have one negative quarter, and that was 2012, and this could have been some kind of write off. But you can see consistent earnings, uh, very profitable company. I think General Dynamics does have a dividend. It's uh, what, what, what's the dividend yield of General Dynamics? Uh, currently, two point four three percent. So that's actually not that bad for people who just want to buy the stock. But let's look at shares outstanding. And once again, they use their positive free cash flow to to buy back shares. And it looks like since two thousand seven, <clears throat> they have a very consistent buyback program. So you know this company is not going to dilute you. Uh, it's not going to, um, it, it's going to help you. You know, if the, if the stock pulls back like it has in the last week, they will step in and probably use uh, free cash flow in order to buy, 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 some, buy back some of their stock. Let's go to price ratios and uh, see what kind of valuation they have currently and where that compares to the past. And currently their, their price to earnings ratio is only 16. You know, back in 2017, 2018, this was in the 20s. In, in 2014, it was 16. Lower is better. So this, this tells me that relative to other stocks in the current market, General Dynamics is, is undervalued. If the entire market is overvalued and General Dynamics' current valuation is relative to where it's always been, then that means relative to the market, it's undervalued. If you followed that, I hope I was clear enough. Price to sales, we can look at this for fun. It's currently 1.39. Once again, it's lower than it was in 2015, 2016, 2017. And obviously, in anticipation for a Republican taking the, the White House, uh, usually the defense stocks will shoot up in the near term, but then they kind of sell off, and then people realize, no, they're, they're, they're still a good buy. <laughs> they're still a reliable stock to uh, put your money in. Price to free cash flow, uh, what is it currently at? Only 12. That's pretty good, guys, uh, considering, once again, in the past, it's been valued in the 20 or above range. And it's been decreasing quarter, over, uh, quarter after quarter during COVID. 
So once again, this is, this is a very undervalued stock relative to the market at whole. Going back to the chart, once again, the technicals here are not very complicated. It was, it was trading sideways around 140, 150 until the 200 day moving average caught up. It then took off and went up 50 bucks a share. It's been channeling and trading sideways between 190 and 210. 210 is the point of resistance that we got to get through for a new breakout. Where could General Dynamics go if it can get above 210? And it's going to go to 250. It's going to go to a nice round number, guys. Investing really isn't this isn't that hard once you, you see these patterns on the charts. So what we've been waiting for since April is this 200-day moving average to slowly catch up. With all this Omicron nonsense happening, there was a sell-off. It touched the 200-day moving average. A new breakout should be happening. Everybody who's selling Zoom and selling Peloton and selling PayPal, selling all these stocks with high PDE and price to sales ratios, they have money. And where do you think they're going to put their money? They're going to put their money in undervalued stocks that have been outperforming the S&P 500, like General Dynamics. So for that reason, I'm going to take a position uh, today. So let's, uh, let's set this up with the option chain. As always, I must say I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Hear me out, but make your own decisions. It's your money. Now, if you want to just buy the stock, you can just buy the stock. Once it gets to 250, it's probably going to start trading sideways again. But for me, I'm just going to buy long calls. And I don't know exactly when it will start trending up. I think near term, but I'm willing to wait a couple months for this stock to eventually take off and break out. For that reason, I just like choosing very far out expiration dates. So I'm going to go with January 20th of 2023. That is in 414 days. You can buy in the money calls if you want. Those are comparable to leaps or you can buy out of the money so you're not spending as much and you can potentially increase uh, increase your value. But I always just like going at the money. It doesn't, doesn't really bother me that I'm paying a little bit more. I just don't want to be paying for intrinsic value in this blue shaded region. So we got puts on the right, calls on the left. I'm going to go with a strike of 200. It's a nice round number so that if I want to sell this for a profit in the future, hopefully I can find somebody to sell it to. So let's go ahead and select the strike of 200. It looks like buyers are bidding 1730 and sellers are selling for 1850. I think with all the volatility in the markets this week, there's you know, there's been probably 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 a spike in the implied volatility, which has increased these option premiums. So if I go right where the sellers are asking at 1850, my break even by January 20th of 2023 is 218 dollars. Now I'm not going to hold it until January of 2023, as soon as General Dynamics breaks out and gets to. At least 240, I will reevaluate uh, how much I'm up and then decide whether or not I want to sell these contracts. So in my Schwab accounts, I'm looking to take about a five to six thousand dollar position. So let's do quantity three. I'm going to do a market order. Schwab has been really good about getting me to uh, getting me a price near the mid. But if I wanted to be aggressive and put in a limit order at like 1740, 1750, I could maybe wait 30 minutes and see if I could get it filled. But I'm just going to do a market order to get it filled for this video. I'm getting the quote of 5550 I don't think I'll be paying the seller's price. Let's put this in and then check out my main account page. Okay, we're back on my main account page and we'll just first check the position that I just took with General Dynamics. Cost per share, 1796 Cost basis, 5386 That's a good price. I'm happy that I'm getting it here. Hopefully, General Dynamics uh, can, can take off and break through that 210 level of resistance in the next couple months. We'll see. For those of you who have been following my other videos about my recent positions that I've taken, let's just kind of go through everything. The first one is HCI. This is my largest position, currently 20% of my accounts. And we're still waiting for the details of the TipTap uh, IPO announcement. Once again, we don't know the date of the IPO and we don't know the details of how much equity in the new company shares that HCI holders are getting. Why has it been selling off in the near term? It's selling off because, once again, 
all these high growth companies, one of them being Lemonade, a comparable health, uh, a comparable insurance company. This one's going down huge. So their market cap is still 2.83. I expect TipTap's market cap to be you know, at, the, at its IPO at least 2 billion. And when you look at the total market cap for HCI, HCI entirely is only valued at 1.1. So HCI is incredibly undervalued. If TipTap, a subsidiary of HCI, gets an IPO valuation of 2 billion, that's twice almost twice as much as HCI. So as soon as we get the details and it's known to the broader market what's going on with this IPO, I think this is going to spring up huge. I'm hoping for it. With my SPY debit spread, uh, the width of the strikes is between 470 and 480. I'm down huge on this currently. I'm down $1,500, but I've got until January 21st for this to recover. If I lose everything, guys, I will make another video explaining how I screwed that up. <laughs> so with Apple, I mean, I'm up 55% or about $3,000 on this position. It's going pretty nice. Big fan of Apple. Berkshire, it's, it's up a little bit. It's up 12%. And I think this is mostly from volatility spiking uh, because I'm the one purchasing the calls. Uh, these, these are going up in premium because there's so much volatility in the market currently. So this... If, if, if Berkshire doesn't go up, this might actually go down. Same thing with Texas Instruments. I don't think percentage-wise on the value of the stock I'm up that much, but because implied volatility has gone up, these have gone up 23% or almost $1,000. The biggest position that I'm down on is Capital One, and all of the financial stocks have been selling off. American Express, Citigroup, U.S. Bank. The reason why is because... Uh, they were the market was pricing in that interest rates would be going up next summer, but the theory is is that if there's a new uh, COVID variant affecting the market, then Jerome Powell and the Fed might delay raising interest rates. The banks can make more money when interest rates go up. This is just how the market views that sector. They're tied to, to interest rates and how profitable the banks could be. But I think Capital One is an exception. I, I don't see, I think they're undervalued to begin with, but they're being traded off entirely as a sector right now. It's actually back up 22% today, so I'm optimistic before my expiration of next June, uh, probably on earnings in January, this will shoot up back to where it should be, in my opinion. Okay, guys, that's all I got for you today. If you are enjoying these stock analysis videos, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good, really helps out the channel. Also, leave me a comment or question down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.